Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor and welcome back to another Gen 2 video. I struggled to think about a topic to discuss today and someone mentioned, well, you've been working on Linux from scratch for a few days. Why don't you just talk about that? I said, why not? <laughs> First off, Linux from scratch is pretty much just what it says. You are installing Linux from bare bones, absolute nothing, ground up. It is very tedious and a word to the wise, to those who are not familiar with Linux, to those who do not go beyond Ubuntu, no offense this is a little bit more difficult than you will ever imagine. If you struggle with the concept of installing Gen 2, do not venture whatsoever into the realms of Linux from scratch. That being said, that is the caveat and that is the warning to all of those who dare to try to go where few have tread. <laughs> anyway, if you do an emerge dash s and look inside of Gen 2, you will see that there is a package in the app doc area called a Linux from scratch. At this point in time, since the last time I did an emerge sync, it is at 7.4. However, upon downloading that and setting that up, that will actually put all of your documentation locally on your hard drive in user share doc Linux from scratch 7.4 and it will be in either PDF or you can also go in here and get it in HTML and run it through your browser. Now when I began to do this I also noticed that as of the 3rd of March just a couple days ago when I actually started this uh, the LFS Book 7.5 is now available, and I highly suggest that if you're going to try a Linux from scratch, that you go with the latest and greatest, just for the sake of making sure that that's one less thing that you have to worry about in the future. So you can click on the PDF here, and it will open up pretty much everything. Let's see. For some reason, it took me to page 229. That's probably where I was scrolling up and down when working on things. But if we go to the beginning here, Linux from scratch, version 7.5. This material is going to pretty much show you everything you ever wanted to know about building a Linux system. It discusses in great detail what every flag that you're enabling does, what you're putting down, what it's working on, so on and so forth. Now after I downloaded this very long book, as you can see part four which is the appendices, if I extend this just a wee bit is at 231 pages now yes that's right 231 that means in the last two days I literally read a lot of pages now granted some pages aren't full of text like we're seeing here in the forward and I hate it when I do that Let me minimize and get that back yeah, as you can see, there's a lot here where it's talking about the whole purpose of this. Now, I did the 64-bit version, and I have not really paid attention to my Linux sizes because I have a large enough hard drive that it didn't matter. But we go through, and it talks about everything. Yeah, Why they chose, for instance, even the packages that, it, that you need to build. And of course, the getting started area. Once we get past all of this here, and we get into introduction instead, 
Now, of course, you, as I said, you can also go to their website, which is right here, and it discusses this as well. And you can go to Read Online Linux from Scratch. You can, t it, you can choose whether or not you want to use the development version or the stable version. Click on there. You've got all of this here. Introduction, how to build an LFS system. And this is all in friendly page view as well. Getting started and such. Telling you what each chapter is going to do. I did go through all nine chapters. It took me 17 and a half hours. And that is removing the six and a half hours of sleep that I finally allowed myself to take while building this and had to stop and get things going. But that being said, Gen 2 is an excellent, it's an excellent distribution to use to allow yourself to build something like Linux from scratch because since Gen 2 is a source-based distribution, all the tools to do the building are already inside of Gen 2. Now, I actually did this with my live distribution that I use on a regular basis. I was really super scared as I went through some of this stuff because you have to reinstall programs like GCC and glibc and things that if you build it in the wrong area with the wrong stuff you could end up destroying and hosing your gen 2 box and i was really quite nervous about the idea of screwing up and doing something wrong when building this nonetheless my gen 2 is still here everything is running still and linux from scratch still works now, the sad thing about this is, to get from page 1 to 231, where the appendices are, not only did it take me 17 and a half hours to go through all of that, building everything step by step and running through, but when you're done, you're left with nothing more than a kernel that you can boot into and a command line interface with nothing else but bare bones. And then you need to go to Beyond Linux from Scratch and start building things like your like your Xorg system and deciding whether or not you want a GUI interface and choosing your GUI interface. And when you're doing this, you will realize I was so spoiled with Gen 2. It makes Gen 2 feel like it's a walk in the park compared to what I have gone through with Linux from scratch. Now Linux from scratch is not difficult, but there is so much reading, there is a lot of typing. It, it helps very much to have everything in a couple windows. If we look, for instance, at my console, if I can find my console down here, here we are. I actually have on this tab my Linux from scratch system that I am currently inside. And XC, for instance, is the directory where Xorg is being installed. If we do a quick ls there, you'll see some of the packages that I've been working on. And if we do an ls-color, I think it's dash dash color. You can see the directories like proto, app, font, lib. All of those have massive amounts of other packages. If we back up one, we'll see here are all the source code of stuff that I've already installed and set up. Each one of these by hand. No fancy automated scripting. Although once you get into some of the Xorg, there are some scripts that they talk about that show you how you can make one package run after another package and speed things up a little bit but for the most part everything in here done by hand a little bit at a time and let me give you an idea you know once you've got everything prepared you know in part two here where it prepares for build it talks about how to how you do your f disk if you need to create a partition setting it up um, formatting it 
everything from scratch, you know, setting up some variables that you're wanting to use, etc., etc., getting your package permissions. Now, this was what I was really scared about, you know, creating and changing package permissions, that sort of thing. A little nervous about that. And then, of course, you get to part three where you're actually building your system. And you'll see, for instance, very important, I believe it talks about it somewhere around here about for every script you should do a certain thing and like right here where it's getting into the data ah oh, can't believe it's only been a couple days here we are like this right here all of this just to ch root into your environment yeah creating some directories and setting it all up creating your essential file systems and links all of these things, very nervous to think about, especially with all of this stuff, getting it up and running, and then installing all of these things. You have to do it over and over again. Like right there, you're not installing the kernel, you're just installing the kernel API headers. And each, each one of these, like this one here, it assumes, of course, that you've extracted the file that you've gone into the file and then you have to do things like this to fix a minor problem patch the program you are doing manual patches that's one cool thing I have gotten very good at learning how to patch things which I never knew before because I have never patched a program before and I have learned you know ex all the different ways to man I've gotten so so spoiled utilizing I've been so spoiled utilizing the uh, the GUI interface with KDE to extract files. It's been a while since I had to do a manual tar extract and, and learning to do like tar x v j f to extract one style or x v capital J f for another. You know, all those sort of things. You know, it's been a while since I've done that. You know, this, I hate it when I do that. Eh. Anyway, it goes through, it talks about how, okay, now you, you can prepare it for this, all of this stuff you have to type in there. You could highlight, copy, and paste, and I did a lot of that. Then you make the program, all of this stuff, you know, and it talks about, too, what each of these mean. You know, prefix, of course, means it's going to install it in user, and then it talks about, like, the enable, if it's something in different, Enable obsolete, for instance, right here. It talks about what that means. And then, of course, the installing it, how to check it. And it talks about things like this. If I move my mug, you will see, in this section, the test suite for glibc is considered critical. Do not skip it under any circumstances. Let me tell you, I sat here for about two and a half hours when it got to the final version of GCC while it ran its test to make sure that it was ready for everything. And, of course... You know, and so far, knock on wood, everything's been cool, no problems, and every test has passed. As I said, I have successfully logged into this, but there are 200, did I say there's 231 pages of programming to read, to go through, and to go set up? This part actually is the easiest part. When you get to the end here, and you get closer towards, say, here, way down here. Ah! Don't you hate it when your your docky gets in the way? That's what. That's right. Scroll all the way down. Actually, it would be a. Ah, oh, there we go. When you get to chapter nine, where it talks about, oh, you finally, the end. Well done. You know, nine chapters. So this is where you finally boot into the system for the first time. And you're at page 228 where it talks about rebooting the system. You have spent 228 pages working on this. And let me tell you, it is very rewarding when you reboot and it works. Now, I will admit, reboot number one didn't look so good. But I did get to a prompt. I will say that. Reboot number two, after I got back in and paid attention a little bit more to chapter seven and 
creating some of these configuration files. Now, I didn't use Grub because since this system here is on my EFI system, I'm using REFIND to or refined for my boot manager. So I didn't have to worry about Grub. But all of this stuff for modules, setting them up by hand, you know, going through and setting up, you know, FS tab. You should do that with Gen2. That was that was probably one of the easier ones. Uh, I've never had to deal with the init tab like right here, or actually, yeah, that's, actually it's input RC. But you know, there's the init tab. There's a lot of other little things that you have to really make sure that you set up. It's all in Chapter Seven, getting it and ready. You know, getting all these things configured proper. All of this stuff, a lot of it you have to type in manually. I couldn't, first time I did this, I could not get the ch root to work right. And it was because of one space. I had a space wrong. I was so frustrated. I was like, oh, I can't believe I can't get into this thing. I can't even ch root into my system and then can't die. I am not worthy of the LFS. I am not worthy of Linux from scratch. And then I figured it out and was able to get in there like I said I've got it right now to where it boots in it looks good I don't have a GUI it's a lot of work but it is definitely something to consider thinking about that if you ever want to see a Linux from the ground up and it did remind me a lot of when Gen 2 when I first built Gen 2 you had to use a stage 1 tarball and that's pretty much building Linux from the ground up and you build everything from the bootstrap and, and all the rest, and it lays down just the basic of bare essentials. Now, when you do an F disk for Linux for Scrap and, and you stretch and you set up your partition, you do download a set of base programs that you can use a wget script to put down in there in your main source area, and then you have to build tools in there from scratch into a tools directory. And then once you have that bare minimum set up, you are actually compiling everything, utilizing the tools you have from your host system. And then once you ch root into there, everything is being built then from that system and that area. So you literally start with nothing and get it all up and running. Awesome way to really get under the hood and get your hands figuratively dirty. I'm sure I've rambled a way bit too long on this. So it is what it is, 17 minutes, 47 seconds, and it's going to be at least 18 and a half before I'm done talking. Lots of fun, long, tedious work. Let me tell you, so far, like I said, I have only run into, out of all the hours I have put into doing this over the last couple days, I have only run into two errors. One was the space that I was missing in between a an area in that ch root command and I figured that one out and then the second one everything was running along fine and I ended up with my first one of my first programs uh, I gotten maybe three quarters closer to 90 percent through and a program actually failed on the compile phase I had to go in there and look and of course it was something I had done I had mistyped something in the dot slash configure that had did it and messed it up, found my mistake, corrected it, and it went on through. The only other thing that was very difficult was making sure, like I said, once you get used to doing that, you get on autopilot, on compiling the configurations and all that by, by hand, and that's no problem. But when you get to actually editing and making sure that you're setting up the configuration files at the end in the ETC area, and that can be a little difficult. You have to pay so much attention. If you're dyslexic and you th see, see one thing and type another, this is not the system for you. But as I said, Gen2 is a great diving board to start something like this because you've got all the tools built into Gen2. Now, another thing I could have done, I could have used the Gen2 boot CD, the minimal boot CD, and gotten into you know just the bare bones of what I needed and gone from there and that way I didn't touch my main distribution but as long as you pay close attention to everything you're doing it should be fine so whether it's morning evening noon or night I hope you're enjoying it 
Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, leave a comment. Let me know you watched it to the end. And don't do like my mama told me she does. She says she watches my videos. And I said, how in the world can you sit there and listen to me chat about something you know nothing about? And she says, well, I watch them to support you, but I don't watch the whole thing. I normally watch the first couple minutes and skip to the end. And I said, mama, I don't get credit for that. They look at it and say, oh, he only watched it for 15 seconds. Or whoever they are, only watched it for 20 seconds. And then I said, that hurts my numbers. <sighs> Parents. And I think they're being supportive. Now we'll see if she watched it all the way to the end. <laughs> so as I said, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Good luck till next time. Don't blow up any systems. If you do try this, as I warned at the beginning... Pay close attention. Do not skip a chapter. Do not skip a section. Read it all and follow the instructions carefully. Or if you really want to, try it in a virtual box first just to see if you can get past that point of being able to see each rooting into the system and making it work. And then if you feel comfortable with all that, then go for it. Right. Anyway, have a good one. This is Dust Gregor signing off. Bye.